It's a troubling case. Police arrest a mother after they say her eight-year-old child tested positive for cocaine. Folks were shocked to find out Lexington's probation and parole office is slated to move here. Now an attorney has sent the city and the state a letter asking for an order to stop the work going on here. New information in the case against a former University of Cincinnati police officer charged with murder. He's now out of jail on bond. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 11. Good evening to you. They say her eight-year-old son tested positive for cocaine. So tonight, police have arrested a Montgomery County mother. 32-year-old Stephanie Walker faces a want endangerment charge. The Montgomery County Sheriff's Office says that social services alerted them about the child. New tonight, Monique Blair talked to a neighbor. It's our top story at 11. It's just a shock. That I, you know, I happened to be down here when it happened. Around 9:15 Thursday morning, Montgomery County Sheriff's deputies arrested Stephanie Walker at her home after her eight-year-old son tested positive for cocaine. How does cocaine get in a little child system? They had to give it to him, you know, and it could have killed him. Deputies tell me social services discovered the cocaine in the child's system and then asked the sheriff's office to investigate. Joyce Norris's three grandchildren live on the opposite side of the duplex Walker and her son lived. It's sad that it's right here this close. You know, we're just a wall between it. They're putting our grandchildren in danger. 32 year old Stephanie Walker was arrested and taken here to the Montgomery County Regional Jail. She is charged with one count of wanton endangerment in the first degree. That's all you hear anymore is drugs, 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 you know, and then the kids are the innocent ones. And it's really sad because our children deserve better. Norris says she saw the eight year old boy often, but not his parents. He seemed hyper, but he was a sweet kid. He was a good kid. He came out and played by himself. I've only seen her, seen them come out and get in their automobile. They don't deserve him if they ain't going to raise him right. In Montgomery County, Monique Blair, WKYT. Deputies tell us the eight year old boy is in the custody of another family member. According to the arrest citation, Walker told deputies she has a problem with cocaine. The plan to move the Fayette County Office of Probation and Parole could be heading to court. As we first told you yesterday at 6, the state wants to move the office from downtown to a building near the Palomar Center off Harrodsburg Road. Many people who live and work nearby aren't happy about it. And after our story aired, some businesses in that area decided to take legal action. Garrett Weimer has the update, new at 11. Folks on Palomar Trace aren't happy about their newest neighbor. For them, the new probation and parole office is simply too close to home. Right over here, that building you can see, and I could literally, with a good throw, throw a stone and hit that building, and that's where they're going to put in the probation and parole. Two dozen neighbors showed up to tell me they don't want it there. It's ridiculous. I mean, I, you've got, I don't know how many kids in the subdivision that always walk across to Orange Leaf and McDonald's and Walmart. Are you, would you let your kids walk past a, a parole office? They're also angry they weren't notified. And I didn't know if they just expected us to wake up one morning and see a bunch of felons outside our door and just be happy about it, but we're not. Contacted by several. An attorney for several business and property owners there sent a letter to the city and the state asking for a stop work order until the public is involved in the process. We want to have a conversation about whether it's appropriate in this neighborhood. And we want to have a conversation uh, about whether there could have been some better options. And we think it's important to have the public's input on that. I reached out to the city of Lexington for a response on receiving these letters. And a spokesperson told me it's a state issue and any concerns should be addressed to the state. As work on the building grows. I want it closed. I want it out of here. End of story. So does the tension in the small space between it and its neighbors. In Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Walburn says he hopes by early next week the parties involved will be able to meet to figure out how to move forward. A spokesperson with Kentucky's Justice and Public Safety Cabinet did not return our request this afternoon for a response. New tonight, Lexington police are trying to figure out what led to a shooting. Police say just after 8 tonight they received calls of shots being fired on Red Coach Trail. That's near Kirk Levington Park. But police could not find a victim. Then, about 20 minutes later, police say a man with a gunshot wound showed up at Baptist Health Lexington. 
but police say he is not cooperating with them. They say at this point they're not sure who shot him. Police say he has non-life-threatening injuries. A Lincoln County woman has returned home from the hospital three days after a pack of dogs attacked her. Only WKYT was there when Loretta Stevens arrived home this afternoon. Police say that she was in her garden Monday morning when seven dogs attacked her. Stevens has injuries to her arms, legs, and shoulders. She says she wants to thank everyone who has helped her since the dog attack. The hospital's been real good to me. They've done real good to me. Yeah, been real good. Ambulance driver's been real good. Everybody's been real good to me. Yeah, I appreciate everybody's help. Steven said she's still in a lot of pain and is facing more surgeries. She said her attorney told her not to talk about the attack itself. Police have charged the owner of the dogs, Christopher Pope, with animal cruelty and harboring a vicious animal. He bonded out of jail today. Tonight, a former University of Cincinnati police officer is free on bond hours after pleading not guilty to murdering a man during a traffic stop. And prosecutors have now released the body camera footage from two other officers at the scene. Marley Hall has the new information. We released Mr. Ray Tenzing at 6.35 this evening. Former University of Cincinnati police officer Ray Tensing is free on bond after entering a not guilty plea Thursday morning. Members of the victim's family were in court. The bond will be one million anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a courtroom. You will conduct yourselves at all times. The 25-year-old is charged with murder for shooting Samuel DeVos in the head during a traffic stop. Hey, how's it going, man? Tensing pulled DeVos over on July 19th for a missing front license plate. DeVos couldn't produce his driver's license. Tensing asked him to get out of the car, but DeVos resisted and restarted the engine. One shot was fired and the car rolled away. I was going to get run over. I was trying to stop him. The prosecutor says Tensing was not in any danger. I think he was making an excuse for a purposeful killing of another person. Another officer's body camera does show tensing down on the street. And a third officer said he saw him being dragged. Those two officers are now on administrative leave. Tensing faces life in prison if convicted. Marley Hall, CBS News. Court workers say Tensing's father posted his bail this afternoon. He put up 10% of the $1 million bond. New tonight, the Jessamine County Grand Jury has indicted a man for a shooting that injured another man. According to the Jessamine Journal, Carlos Taylor was indicted on a first-degree assault charge. He had been charged with attempted murder two weeks ago. Nicholasville police say Taylor shot Calvin Livers near the corner of East Chestnut and Jefferson Streets. Well, to say the least, we've had some rough weather across the bluegrass this month, but July is ending with some beautiful conditions. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has an early look at a pretty nice forecast. Yeah, it's been a very nice day overall, guys. A day that started out with pleasant temperatures, sunshine this afternoon. Now we're ending it with the blue moon of Kentucky that is uh, just keeping on keeping on shining out there. We look into Lawrenceburg from our WKYT weather watcher over there, Greg Walters. How about this close-up shot of our blue moon? Why is it called a blue moon? Well, it's the second full moon in a calendar month. We had one back on July 1st. We're getting one tonight and into July 31st as well. Michelle Houck, a little different view of our blue moon out there for what many of us were noticing. That was the full moon rise as uh, she was capturing that shot coming out of Nicholasville. Current temperatures up Upper 60s to low 70s. Then you get out into some of the open countryside. It's 64 degrees already into Mount Sterling, 68 into Danville. Chances are some of those areas will wake up to thermometer readings down into the upper 50s. And indeed, early tomorrow morning, a couple of those thermometers will likely show some upper 50s. Here's what's going on on Live First Alert Defender. That's a whole lot of nothing. Out and about tomorrow. Forecast for basically a carbon copy of what we had out there today. A lot of low and mid 80s under mostly sunny skies. Guys, when I come back in a few minutes, we'll look at the beginning of the month of August that has a tame look to it, to say the least. An important deadline is quickly approaching in the future of this center point project in downtown Lexington. Back in April, the city demanded that developer Dudley Webb fill in the block, claiming no work was being done there. Attorneys for both sides fired off letters at each other, but in May, they agreed to back off for 90 days to allow a development group time to look the project over. That 90-day period ends Monday. So where do things stand? 
Lexington Mayor Jim Gray told me he can't speak specifically about where things are right now until the 90-day period is officially over. I can say that uh, I've observed the project now for almost eight years, and uh, while it's been turbulent, while it's been challenging, that I'm optimistic today that every effort is being made to push to encourage this project going forward. Dudley Webb said he has no comment while the 90-day period of talking to financing prospects is still in place. We are a little more than three months from Election Day, so where does the race for Kentucky governor stand? Tonight, some results from the new WKYT Herald Leader Bluegrass poll were released. Democrat Attorney General Jack Conway is running against Republican businessman Matt Bevan. The poll found Conway slightly ahead of Bevan by three percentage points. Conway leads in Louisville and most of central and eastern Kentucky. Bevan leads in the southwestern, west central, and northern parts of the state. For more on the Bluegrass Poll, just go to WKYT.com. New tonight, federal investigators now think they know what caused a small plane to crash in Boyle County earlier this month. The NTSB says the pilot ran out of fuel, which led to the crash. Investigators say he misjudged how much fuel he would need as he flew across the country in his experimental single-engine airplane. It crashed next to a house in Junction City on July 18th. The pilot walked away from the crash and no one on the ground was injured. New tonight, firefighters are trying to figure out what caused the fire that ripped through a Franklin County home. The fire started at the home on Schweitzer Road about 8 tonight. The Franklin County Sheriff shared these pictures on Facebook. He says that no one was injured. The fire created a lot of smoke, though, in the area. Investigators have identified the man they say stole a car with a baby inside and led police on a chase. They say 35 year old Sidney Fee Jr. took his own life after crashing the car in Madison County. The baby wasn't injured. Police say Fee stole the car from a gas station in Georgetown late yesterday afternoon. Friends say he once worked at the Fitness 24 7 gym in Berea. They told us they can't understand why any of this happened. State police hope newly released surveillance pictures will help them find some burglars. Police say two men broke into a warehouse on Liberty Church Road in Corbin Tuesday afternoon. They say the men stole some new refrigerator unit condensers. Police say one of the burglars used an ATV to drive off with them. Police also think one of the burglars was driving an SUV which was found nearby. Also new tonight, police have arrested a man they say led them on a chase that injured a state trooper. Police say that Basil Gilpin was arrested today in Tennessee. On Sunday, they say he tried to hit state troopers with his truck at a Bell County safety checkpoint. Police chased him, and after his truck became stuck, police say Gilpin ran off. During the chase, they say trooper Josh Messer broke his leg. New tonight, a fundraiser was held in Lexington to help a family receive a new home. Queen Bee Gifts in the Palomar Center hosted the fundraiser for the Lexington Habitat for Humanity Women Build Home. As the name suggests, women are organizing the construction of this habitat home. The home for Naomi Yanni, an African-American immigrant, and her four children is scheduled to be built this fall. We're all about empowering women to help other women, and it means a lot to give back to the community in any way that we can. In more than 20 years, 15 Lexington families have received homes through the Women Build program.